Hi, my name is Sherry, and you are in my stamp studio. And today I'm going to show you a fun little card. I was wanted to use the Yummy Christmas, and that was what I intended when I first got my stuff out to make this card yesterday. Um, but I don't know how many of you know that it um, the dies. There are dies for it, but they are actually the dies that go to the Cuckoo for You set. And this set is in the annual catalog. This set is in the holiday catalog. And the, if you buy the Cuckoo for You, you can get it as a bundle. And you know, when you buy a bundle with Stampin' Up, you save 10%. So um, when I pulled this out, because I have not used it yet, to get the dies that go with it, I thought it really reminded me of Oktoberfest. And you know, it's almost October. So I thought, well, I will use I'll use this first and I'll make a cute little Oktoberfest card and then my next card I will do um, the Yummy Christmas so that way if you are thinking about getting the gingerbread house set and you don't have it yet you can kind of see if you want to go ahead and just get this super adorable little um, cuckoo set and get the bundle so you'll have the dies and that way you'll have some um, things that go all year round and tomorrow when I do the um, gingerbread video I will show you the pieces I mean it's kind of obvious it's super clever like this little moose here his little um, cutouts will do the holly and the gingerbread I mean the door does the little gumdrop so it's super super cool the way they have combined them together but for today I also want to you know I'm a big fan of looking at this set and taking out the big pieces or taking out the words. So if we do that with this set, obviously um, it can be a Christmas set because we have a tree that you could put the, our super cute little copper stars on. Um, he could easily be any of the reindeer, especially Rudolph, if you add one of our red rhinestones to his nose. We have a little Easter bunny over here. Um, there's a whole bunch of fun fall pieces because we've got the squirrel, we've got the, eight, the pine cones, we've got leaves, We've got pine trees that can be either way. And then with winter, again, you have the little um, cuckoo, which if you color him right, he can just be a bird. He doesn't have to go in the clock. So don't just look at it. You know, take the big piece out, take the words out, and then look at the other pieces because this doesn't just have to be a cuckoo clock set. So you may think, how many times will I use it? But when you see the interactive part of it, you're going to love it. And sometimes I know the interactive parts are like oh that's so scary I, I will never be able to do the interactive and so we give up on, on them right away I'm going to show you how super easy it is so first I'm going to do the stamping and I have um, double mounted a lot of my stamps just to make it easy because it, when you're going to cut them out and I'm going to cut them all out um, it doesn't matter where you stamp them you just need to get them all on one piece so I've toyed with this being an October camp project, but because of the amount of coloring, the only piece that takes a long time to color is the, um, the house. The rest of them color super, super quick. When I was designing the card, um, when I was a little girl, I collected dolls from around the world. I think it kind of started my um, desire to see the world because I've, I've done a lot of traveling. Let's see how I want to get this on here. To make the best use of my paper. I think I just turned the paper and I didn't actually save anything. Well, and that didn't even work because I was looking and not um, stamping. But I used to collect um, dolls and I had several like from Amsterdam and Germany and then when I was in my 20s I did tra travel through both of those places. So I think this card is kind of in my mind like a 60s, 70s travel poster and that's kind of where I got the colors from. Um, I just kind of went with that so it's pretty flat there's I'm not going to do any blending even though I'm using the blend there we go got it on there that time this time I wasn't looking to see if I was in camera I was looking at my paper sometimes it's a little bit difficult to do both at once I just have this calendar piece on here for a piece of scrap for the little bit of coloring that I'm going to do I'm not going to color it all in because I know you don't want to watch me now I do need two of the little pine coney things because they are the dangles for my clock so when you have them double mounted all I need to do is ink this one because that's the only piece that I'm going to need twice. Another reason I have my scrap here. So I'm just going to put this one here. Now I have two of those. That's all I need for that block. And then I have almost all of my other pieces on here. 
So I'm using the tree. I don't know if it's a deer or a moose head. Or if it makes a difference. He's cute, whatever he is. Um, and the squirrel. And the cuckoo. So they are all on this one block. So let's get them on here. So you can see easy how um, you could use this set a lot right now for fall because it's got a lot of pieces that are good for fall. So it was easy to make an Oktoberfest colored card with it. And then I have the leaf over here because I wanted multiples of those. So I'm going to do three leaves. So when you're going to cut your stuff out, this is a perfect way to use... Oops, I didn't even get that one all the way because again I'm looking at the camera. And you know, I have a clear desk and I'm still stamping like I don't. So three of these. And you know, photopolymer sometimes will try it. If you mess up, you can always try to stamp over it again, which I'm not gonna stick my head right over the camera. So we'll see. I didn't get it too well, but sometimes you can. But the first time I made the card, I did a whole bunch of them because I wasn't sure how many. I had all of these ideas, and in fact, I had some other dies that I could, like I had the little rope that I thought could be a pretzel. I just had a whole bunch of stuff, and then it, as it turns out, the stuff I have on here barely fits. So then to color them, um, there's one more stamp, but this is a little interactive piece, and we'll add it um, once we've done our die cuts. To color it, these are the colors that I went with. Like I said, I was going... Um, Retro 70s, probably. Retro late 60s for my color selection. Um, and then here's the colors of cardstock that I have. So you can see I, I'm not going to do a lot and there's no blending. So when I did it, here's my olive and it has a super hard cap to open. <laughs> um, remember when you um, color with your blends, they soak through on the back. And the more you color, the more they bleed. Because the ink has to go somewhere, right? So if you sit here and color and color and color and color and color, for one, that's gonna make this card take a lot longer. And the ink has to go somewhere, because a lot of people ask me why their blends bleed and it doesn't look like mine are when they watch my videos. And it's because I'm not putting any more ink on here than you need to color. The other benefit to that, as I mean, one, it doesn't bleed. The other thing is you're not using up the ink in your blends. Like it's not, you're not wasting your ink because you're only using what you need. But because I'm not blending with these, I want just nice solid color. So just color in and then let it go. Because it does bleed out a little bit, a tiny bit. So these are the colors that I worked with, and like I said, I'm not gonna color it at all. For the most part, I used only the bullet tips. The only one that I used the brush tip for was when I did the clock and the inside, and I'll, because they were huge, easy areas. And so with the clock, I did use the brush. And again, you know, don't you don't need a lot of ink, you're just going for a base of color. And then to get my, um, this is the only one that I didn't use a dark and light of. It was daffodil. I really wanted curry, but we don't have curry blend. And then just traced this. And again, you don't need to go back and back and back and go over it. You just want one bit of color. So that was the only time that I used a brush tip. All the rest of it, I did a bullet tip. Um, let's finish the tree, just so you can see how cute it is when you only just color. You don't have to color. So see, you're just getting enough ink in there to have it be the color, not to blend and not to get a super dark color of ink. So we have that. Then. Um, There'll be close-up pictures on my website so you can go back and see exactly how it was all colored. I'll make sure that I get close-ups of everything. So I did do all of the coloring on this paper because I think it's a whole lot easier to color when everything's attached. Once you cut these little things out, then they're moving all over the place. So through the magic of about 15 minutes, I went from this to this. 
So you can see everything's colored. It's all just, I, the reason I did it on white, um, because I did think about doing my house on the um, soft suede because that's the color I wanted the house to be, the cuckoo, the cuckoo clock. Um, but I wanted my flowers to be white on the house. And if you stamp it on, if you go ahead and stamp this on the color that you want it to be, then your flowers are not going to be white. And then you would have to get the gel pen and those just don't give the look that I wanted. And I mean, I enjoy coloring and it really, I probably didn't even take 15 minutes. It was probably 15 minutes from mounting the blocks on the stamps all the way through to coloring. So that's what you get. And I will list the colors over there. There's not very many, obviously, colors. So let's get it all cut out. And then I'll show you how to make the little interactive mechanism. So move our die cutting machine over here. Then for the one um, basic black piece, I do have the wood grain embossing folder. just because I wanted the wood look to mount this on. So just send this through. It doesn't matter which direction that your wood grain goes. And this is one that was one of our older ones, so it doesn't need the blue dye. If you have one that's a new one, then you'll need the blue plate, or not dye, but blue plate. So this just is gonna give us a little bit of nice texture to mount everything on. Um, gives it a nice little German wood feel. Get. Now everything else is just going to get cut on here. Now I do like to do it like on here, but then I don't like to line all of these up on here necessarily. So let's go ahead and cut these apart a little bit. And then we'll just kind of do them in sections. Because we have to do three leaves. So every pass through I do want to get a leaf. And then we'll just get different pieces every time. So let's get the house, and then you can see where this is the same gingerbread house if you get the gingerbread set, exact same shape, which is nice of them to do. And then this is a piece of glossy black. We have a couple of pieces that are not going to have been stamped because here's the, our clock hands. There are some stamped hands, and there's also a little circle piece if you want to make that part interactive. I'm not going to do that. Here's our little cuckoo guy. And if you watch my videos, you know, I don't like, you could take all of the time and put all of the dies on one pass. But then if you, when you go to put your top plate on, if they move, then you just have to recenter them all. And I think it takes less time to just do some. I could put the door on, but see, it's kind of stamped closer. So we'll just wait for another time because we're going to need three leaves anyway. I'm trying to find my leaf die. So when you're going to have to do multiple passes, there's no sense to try to, jam as many on as you can. I do need two of those, but again, we're going to need two leaves, so we're not getting this all done in two passes, so let's just go with what we got now. I'm sitting down. I should stand up because I always run my die standing up. I just think they're easier to see. Okay, and then when you go to lay your plate on, you have multiples of these. See, because I already moved them a little bit. Put your plate flat down and kind of grab them so they don't move. But then if your plate's not lined on straight and you move the whole thing, then you have to reset them all. So don't take all of your time to put a ton of them on there because you just waste all your time resetting all the time. Okay, so there's our clock hands. There's the cuckoo. There's one of our leaves. guy done with the house and only do one pass through because if you go back and forth the other thing that happens with these is they tend to hop um, and then if they've hopped they could squish over a little bit and then on your second pass they're gonna cut a different place and it's gonna look awful and they cut perfectly like they've cut well the first time through so don't don't do it again you don't need it it doesn't need a second cut so here's the little pine cone chain. Get that. We can get the door. I feel like I took the door out. I did. It's over here. 
And then on this pass through, I have some scrap, which I have way too big of a piece of. Um, and my first card, I did this on some crumb cake. This time I'm gonna try it on this color. And then you need, this piece here is going to be a mechanism that helps you do the interactive piece of your card. And it just needs to be on there. That's one that you get stamped after it's cut. So, pull these through. And see how they've hopped? See how this is lifted up? Now, if I try to go back through, that could squish over a little bit. And it's already cut. There's no reason to go again. So, they're all cut. Need one more of those. We're done with the door. We need one more leaf. <laughs> Trying to get the ones that we need. This one cuts and scores, but it's probably stuck in there because it did score. One more of those. So get this piece, and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut these apart again too. There's no, again, there's no reason to try to smush these all on here. Just go ahead and cut them apart. It's easier than trying to get your um dies all super close together and again before you go to all the time to make sure that they are um, all straight on there make sure you're all this is lined up because sometimes people put them all on and then they go to pass it through and they realize the plate isn't on and then when you line your plate up all your dies move so we've got this one. Oh, maybe I did get two of these already Are both of those cut I don't know, maybe in a second I'm gonna realize those are someplace else. Nope, there it is. I didn't think I did two of those. I just like talking to myself. Sometimes, you know, when you do videos and you're at home, I don't even, my cats aren't even in here today. I am literally talking to myself. I think they're downstairs on chipmunk duty. The chipmunks are um, fast at work gathering stuff for winter, even though it's still 90 degrees in Indiana, they know winter's coming. And then we need the tree. And there's still one more interactive piece to come, but I like to do it on its own. Okay, and again, you have lots of pieces on here, so put this straight down. And as you lay it down, make sure it's straight. And then kind of grab them all. And that's how you save them from all, like, moving. Especially as it gets colder in our houses, which now it is not, um, but as you start to have heat on your houses, if you have electric heat and it gets super staticky, then they really move. So we've got a tree, gosh, cute little squirrel, our last leaf, head, Okay, and then the last little interactive piece. It's really not a piece, it's the cut that you need to make the interactive. And the gingerbread house doesn't do an interactive. I have not looked online to see if anybody has made it interactive, because you probably could. So there's this piece here, and it cuts holes in it. And it has these two hearts. Can you see the two hearts here and here? Those don't actually cut. They are, they are guides, so you know where to lay it. So see the two hearts on your house? When you line those up and the two hearts show through there, it's actually just going to cut the line here that you're going to push that little pull through through that we cut out of the um, suede card stock a second ago. So literally all it does is cut a line. But when you put the two hearts there, again I should be standing up. You have those two hearts lined up right there. This is why I like to just do this one because I don't want that one to move at all. See, it's already moved because I'm not standing up. When you're sitting down and you do your um, die cutting, you're doing you're like you're putting everything through it in, at whatever angle you're sitting at. So it's not particularly right. And normally when I stamp and I'm not filming, I'm standing up. So when I film, it's a totally, I, I'm stamping totally different than I do. And don't y'all comment below and tell me to use my magnetic plate because I hate my magnetic plate. I don't like them. And I don't I don't like the way that your dies are after a lot of people at your class use them. Oh. Okay, pull that 
pull this out. I'm going to follow my own tips and I'm going to stand up. So hang on just a second. This will make it much better. When I did this on my first two cards and I was just doing it, I had no problem whatsoever. But normally when I, my machine is up high, here we go. Here we got it. All that to get one little slit, and I'll show you where it puts the slit. But normally my machine's up high, so I'm not bent over trying to get it where it is at table. So see, it puts a little cut here, and it puts a little slit there. So you do want them to be straight. That's why, you know, sometimes my die cutting is not the best when I'm sitting and showing you guys on video. And then I have my card that I've already done prior and it looks a little bit better, but it is what it is when I'm sitting. So if you find your die cuttings a little bit crooked, try standing up and try having your um, machine. Like when I do camps at my home, um, my, my machine is up high. It's on my island and I think it's a little bit better for everybody to stand when it's a little bit higher. So now we have this piece. This is the interactive piece. Pop it out of here. Long tool. And it ha it comes and it has a score here, and then these are kind of scored. So you fold this in. Here. Just along the score mark. Got a little score mark here and these are kind of scored so you want to score these in a little bit but don't press those because you need to open them back up once you stick them through the card so I'm going to open this back up now that I've scored it so it's nice and flat so I can stamp it and then there's this stamp here and it has a down arrow and it just shows um, people that they need to pull down well, let me see. Is it down or up? Oh, it's up. So they need to push up on this. So make it so it goes up. Where'd my black seam pad go? It felt like down wasn't right. It just lets the recipient know that they need to move this on their card. Otherwise, it just looks like you have a little stick sticking out. So just line it up on the part that the front of it, which you can tell because the other one gets folded behind. And then take your adhesive. We're almost done with this. Now it's just mostly all sticking it together. And just put it along the whole bit of this. And then when you fold it back over, now that you've scored it and stamped it and it's been um, pressed hard with your bone folder once, it goes together nice and, and it makes a really sturdy little pull up on it. So you're going to take this and you slide it down through this little hole and then up again through the little hole that's right down here. And you can see that mine didn't bleed a whole lot on the back of this because I didn't do any blending. I just did coloring. Because you know, sometimes when you use your blends, you can see your almost your whole design on the back. But you shouldn't on this because you don't want that. Okay, now you have these two little tabs here. You do need to poke those through. But you don't want to break them or like bend them off because they're going to be what stops this later. Um, and I found my take your pick tool or your pokey thing if you still have those. Your pierce, paper piercer. We call it pokey thing at camp. So see, you kind of angle those down so one goes in and you get the other one in there. That's the most fiddly part of this card. So now those are both stuck in there and then you're going to take your door and you want to fold it on the fold. So now when your person goes to pull it, this will flap forward. See? Now you're going to take your door that you colored and put your adhesive on this piece. You don't want to put it on your door because you don't want to over stick it and then have it 
have your door be stuck shut and put it here and now when you pull it see that's why you want your arrow to go up because your person needs to push it up and when they push up then the door will open so when it opens obviously you can do your cuckoo you can do it um, I mean you can put it on a little spring if you want you can put it so it comes out on the door you can make it a little bit more fancy for this card I'm just sticking them in here so now when they push up they'll see the little thing there are also some little words that you can stick on the on the door so when it flips open you see the words but how cute is that and after, I mean it's just sticking that through there it's super simple and if you get the set stampin up also has a video but you can come back and watch this to see how super easy that is um, so now let's just stick it all together this is crushed curry this is the color that I wanted the blends to be but they all coordinate nice enough I just wanted it to have that 70s feel actually last night my husband and I watched um, a very Brady renovation on HD, HDTV, who's loving that series. And we watched the episode about the um, avocado and orange kitchen. This kind of has that same retro 70s, stick those colors together kind of feel to it. So you want to put this on next. And to keep your mechanism still moving, obviously you can't stick it to the card. So put three dimensionals around it and then I just left all of this area down here free and then you need to put your little hangies on and there is a little like little in right here I just did them there just so they'd be on the same even spot just hoped for the best as far as how long they were and then I just kind of looked those are good enough so you're gonna stick this on and it's gonna all overlap the the black and the curry and now we have our little hands centers out and I did this out of a little scrap of glossy black but um, you could use regular black you could use silver or gold depending on what color of you could put a little um, a little brad in there which I thought about doing but they weren't on my table and you know I was ready to be done with the card so I just glued them on here with my adhesive because I don't care if this part's interactive but if you have a brad then of course it would spin so I just stuck it on with that and then just kind of to kind of keep this on here I have our metallic pearls my gold ones are about gone I have a couple you know that have come loose in the package the silver would work too you could use either color but these ones that have come loose are still in there so I'm going to stick the gold one right there now we just need to put the rest of these pieces on and I just did all of the rest with just a regular adhesive and I just kind of spaced them out um, if you look like if you just go online and you google Oktoberfest or like German travel post retro German travel posters you can kind of see the feel that was in my head and then after I did it I looked those up I should have looked before but then all it did was make me want to tell Stampin' Up make a stamp set that has all these images I wanted a little beer stein I want a little pretzel like I was all about it I think we should have a whole little series of travel inspired vintage vignette stamps how cute would that be so just stick these on and I also thought um, about putting the word cheers because you know I have the set that's in the holiday catalog that where the cheers comes out um, for Oktoberfest because I thought that would be cute but how sweet is this super super cute so you just 
again, awkward, wrong angle, but you just push those up. There's my other one. This one I added a couple more pearls. When it was all said and done, I didn't think it needed it. Um, and then this one, like I said, I did this in crumb cake because I thought they might need a little bit more. This one's been done a couple more times, so it's flipping a little more. But once it gets flipped a few times, they flip better. There we go. It just needs to make sure you do it a few times before you send it to the person and then they flip. And like I said, there's words on here. You could write words on there. Oh, you could write a birthday number. Super, super cute and not hard. You could do it in, it could be for Oktoberfest. It could be the words in the set. There's missing you on cuckoo, cuckoo for you. There's cute words in the set. So I hope you enjoy that and then come back tomorrow and you can see how to use the same dies with the um, gingerbread set. And obviously it's going to be a totally different card with that. So have a great day. Bye.